Well, now you give some uh, advice here to young architects, and I'm interested in this because I'm a lot sorry, of people have said, uh, a lot of people have said, well, of course, with Mr. Wright's eminence, uh, it's possible to do these things, but I'm a struggling young architect. Now, I'd like you to, if you would, uh, just comment on one or two of the, uh, the little things that you say here. What are you going to bring up against me now? Well, the first says, forget the architectures of the world. Presumably that means the past architects, okay. Except as something good in their way and in their time. Right. Still good. Well, wh wh why that? I mean, uh, he, he can't learn to draw anything unless he studies Palladian or uh, Gothic. Oh, or I disagree entirely. Right? Well, right. I'm just suggesting this. I know nothing about it. But, uh, the set styles, of course, stand in the way of the young man's conception of what architecture really is, because architecture is a great spirit that's living, has lived, will continue to live, as long as humanity lives, because it's humanity's concept of a beautiful way of life. But there's no principles of design or form that he needs the to learn? The principles change as life changes, and as materials change, and as opportunities change. What was right for the Greeks is wrong for us, because we've been emancipated from the small spacing of the Greeks who had a stone only to, they had to space everything with a stone. Well, we Washington can, is pretty Greek, isn't it, uh, at the moment? Well, you see, of course, we have these museum pieces. We inherited them, and Washington is one of them. And I think it should be left to be a great museum, and I think we ought to build a modern city now where our advantages are advantageous. They're disadvantageous. See our city here, see New York. You don't approve, don't approve of New York. Well, I don't think you approve of New York. Does anyone approve of New York? This is this is meat and drink, you know, to our viewers in the California and uh, Isn't New York Wisconsin? just a great overgrown village crazed by success? And that's what makes it go up, you mean, build up? I thought that was... Well, it was the only way the landlord could hold concentration and rents. Because foolishly, he imagined that he would be able to do that. But in doing it, he has really overshot the mark, and now the whole city is in agony. But this traffic problem is insoluble, it never can be solved, and you see everything going out. Decentralization is inevitable, taking place everywhere. You mean the, 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 the little gas station was the, was the first evidence of it. Now the department stores Go out here, even in New York. They're all going out. Factories are going out. Well, I'm sorry to hear that the young and aren't the best people going out. Well, I live in New York, so I don't know whether that's an implied insult or not. <laughs> <laughs> now, the second thing here says, none of you go into architecture to get a living unless you love architecture as a principle at work for its own sake, prepared to be as true to it as to your mother, your comrade, or yourself. Well, that's good advice, and I suppose these young fellows find it hard to live up to it because I've asked some of them after they've been with me for a while and they've gone out and I see the reversion to type on their part. Well, boys, what's the matter? Well, they say, you know, Mr. Wright, we have to make a living. We have to live. And the answer that's to that me. always was, I don't see why. Because if you have to live at the expense of something you love, and destroy it, why should you live? It's perfectly easy to get some visible means of support, marry a rich girl, or ah, take, a, a, take a job as a laborer, and, and uh, what uh, practice architecture with your right hand and make a living with your left hand. Isn't that the proper sense? I think you might be kind of tired in the evening if you're a laborer to... Uh, to be an architect with your right hand, wouldn't you be? Well, you could be tired in the evening and work all night at architecture. That would be the way to get at it. This is the, as I can see, the secret of your endurance. I just wonder how many people would uh, would make it. They would if they loved the thing they did. Now, there's another one here. Uh, I assume, again, that in your architectural school, I mean, you've had uh, I don't many, have many students, though, many students. No come students. To, but does anybody ever come to you? I mean, suppose I said, look, I want to be an architect. I want to learn from you. Uh, could I come to you without knowing anything about uh, pediments or porticos or uh, uh, regency? Uh, You'd be more welcome if you didn't know anything about it. You'd know nothing. But you wouldn't come to study. You'd come to work. You'd come to be one of the fingers on the hand of whatever was going on. Oh, I see. Uh, You'd be an apprentice, you see. This is the, the old apprenticeship where 
You know, in the olden day, the apprentice was a slave of his master. This is where feudalism matches, meets up with democracy. That's where democracy frees the slave ah. and makes him a companion of his master. And he's free to go or come as he pleases and stay as long as he likes. But he has to conform only to a few rules. But he has to love the thing he does. He has to be there because he'd rather be there than anywhere else in the world. And he lives there? He lives around? He lives uh, with... We all live together and work together. Well, how about how many uh, companion students do you have? There are about 60 now. They come from all over the world. Do they... Some of them have training? Uh, oh, some have training and have to But it doesn't matter it. if they don't. And some don't have training and are quite ready to develop without it. Well, now, what's the minimum thing? that They, they surely have to know some engineering. Am I right? No, because an engineer is only a rudimentary, undeveloped architect. Oh, they yeah. have to get the sense of the thing, the sense of structure, the sense of materials. They have to get the nature of the thing, which very few engineers know. The and engineer the is the a bookman, as a rule. He gets everything out of books and formulas and puts things together, takes them apart, without ever knowing, well, you know these characters who know all about everything and understand nothing. Well, you can say that of an engineer where architecture is concerned. Well, where do you he think they should... He knows all about the architecture and knows nothing about it. Where do you think they should get their roots from, from the, the nature, terrain? The... Nature study, not necessarily terrain. Nature with a capital N, the nature of this hand, what is it? The nature of the nail on the thumb, whatever is this. What's the nature of this? You learn what it'll do. What uh, is Brett What is the nature will... of this little thing here? Well, what is it? Isn't that cute? What's the nature of that? That's nature in that sense that he stood. And from that, he develops by way of experience, trying this, trying that, seeing it tried. In building. Out of our failures at Taliesin, when we make a... When we make a bad thing and have to take it down or do it over, he learns. And he learns more, as I have done in my lifetime, more from my mistakes than I ever learned from, from my success. From a and from a professor. Well, I don't know There's why one... professors are any more than I know why a profession is. There's one thing here. It says, then, this is the 11th piece of advice, go as far away as possible from home to you build your first building. The physician can bury his mistakes but the architect can only advise his clients to plant vines. Isn't have you ever... True? It's I, true, but have you ever advised any clients I to plant vines? I feel that way now about so, some of the things that I did early in my life. Uh, well, I'm sure everyone does. We'll leave your such clients nameless. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Wright. I think I'd prefer to leave them nameless. <laughs> Thank you.